this real quick. Um, this lesson is really just, here's a formula, plug some numbers into it and go. Okay, this is going to be a really simple lesson. Um, this is, and this is an application of all of these exponent things we've been talking about. Okay, so those of you who want to know where would we use this, this isn't a rational exponent, this isn't like a fraction exponent one, but it is an exponential application. Compound interest, this has to do with banking, okay? And what this means is this is like how they figure out how much money you're getting due to interest in your bank account. Um, so what happens with compound interest? The difference between compound interest and simple interest is with compound interest, you get to earn interest on the interest that you've already earned. Okay? Here's how it works. Let's say your bank says, I'm going to give you 10% interest, which is huge, but I just want to use simple numbers so that you can follow along with me. So don't ever walk into a bank and expect that much interest. Um, if they're going to give you 10% interest compounded twice a year, that means that after six months, they're going to give you half of that interest. So they're going to take 5% of whatever you have in your bank account, okay, add it to your bank account, and then let you carry on for the rest of the year. At the end of the year, they're going to calculate that 5% again. So they've given you 10% just at two different times. The reason that's beneficial is that second time that they go to give you the interest, you've already gotten mon extra money in there from the first time they gave you interest. So now you're earning more interest because you have interest money added in there. Does that make sense? So the more often it's compounded, the better off you are, okay? Every time they give you interest, which means they're giving you free money, they're going to add it to your bank account, and then you get to count that towards your next interest that you get. Mateo? Will we eventually take a class or something where they teach us how to do taxes? Um, I, I believe like finance, um, maybe accounting, but probably finance would so be the best class, class for that. That's the class you would take. Yes, you're not required to take it, no. So how do you learn how to do Um, You, I mean, quite honestly, I, I sort of am self-taught. I just read a bunch of stuff. Um, college classes offer it. Um, there's a lot of, like, online tutorials. There's not, um, and, you know, decisions might cover a little bit of that. I'm not sure. I know decisions covers, like, budgeting and stuff, but I'm not sure if they cover taxes. So, right. To be honest, they've made it so, like, user-friendly that... I don't know. But yeah, that's that's where I was focused. If you're curious about that kind of stuff though, shoot for human finance in the senior year. So yeah? When they take the percentage out, they take it off your balance at the end of the six months? Right. Or is it like an average of the three months? Nope. So it's the at the end of the six months, whatever is sitting in there, they're gonna take five percent of that. So let's say you had a hundred dollars in there. Five percent of that hundred is is five dollars. So they're gonna put five extra dollars in your account. So now at the end of the year, when they go to add interest in, you don't have $100 anymore. You have $105. And now you're going to take 5% of that, which is going to be slightly more than that $5 you got before. And then they're going to add that in. So the next year that you add more interest, it's going to add even more. So every time they give you like an interest payment, for lack of a better word, it's going to be more and more and more if you leave the money alone. Okay? if that makes sense. So that's what this calculates. This calculates how much money is left in your account if you leave it alone for such and such amount of time. So let's talk about what all these letters mean. P is the principal. And when you're talking um, banking and investments, principal is the amount of money that you are investing. That's the money that you are walking into the bank with and saying, here, put this in a savings account. Okay? Um, a is just the total in your account after that amount of time. A is what you're usually solving for. Okay, A is like, how much money will I have if blah, blah, blah. R is your interest rate. Okay, that's going to be given to you as a percentage. You have to make sure to turn it into a decimal. How do you turn a percent into a decimal? Two to the left. left. Yes. And it's gonna, sometimes it's going to look like it's already a decimal. It's going to be like 2.4%. That's still a percent, so you still have to move the decimal two to the left. N is the number of times per year it's compounded, and we'll talk about those scenarios in just a minute. And then T is the total amount of time you're leaving it in there. Now, the question I got first hour on those two was, aren't N and T the same thing? No. N is like if you're compounding monthly, how often would that be? Okay, so that's how many times in a year? 
12, right? So then your end value would be 12, okay? The time is the amount of time that you're leaving it in there. Maybe you're leaving it in there for five years. Maybe you're leaving it in there for 10 years, okay? So N is how many times per year, and T is how many years total. So speaking of that N, um, flip your paper over to the back side of that sheet. You should have a blank page there, okay? I want to talk about those N values. Um, what, these problems are all going to be word problems, not to freak you out, but they are all very standard word problems. Like basically the entire problem is just going to lay out each one of these numbers for you and you just have to pick them out. The only one that's tough is the N because the N is given to you as a word and not as a number. So here are the type of words you're going to see for your N value. And normally I would have had to do an activity with this before we did this lesson if we would have done it on Monday. Um, because we flip things around, you haven't seen these yet, but that's okay. Um, annually, anyone know how many times a year that is? Once. Once, yep. Annually is twice a year. So if it says annually, your N value is going to equal one. Okay. What about semi-annually? Nope, that's twice a year. Um, I heard not even once. Um, just a second, let me write and then I'll explain that one. Um, not even, what you're thinking of, no, that's very close. What you're thinking of is biannually. Biannually means every two years, so that's like half of a time every year. You probably won't run into that with interest rates, but. So for semi-annually, N equals two. What's the next one you might see? Quarterly. Four. Four, yeah, quarter is always four. Quarterly is four times a year. The next one you might see is monthly. How many times a year is that? Twelve. Yeah. Nine. No. Twelve. What if I gave you daily? You'd be really lucky if you got interest compounded daily. But yeah. So you're okay, boys. Okay. So. When you see, we could figure that out. Actually, the, the activity that I was going to have you do was going to make you figure all of that stuff out. But um, So when you see these words in the problem, that's a, a signal for you to put these numbers in for N. Okay? So here's what I would like to do now. I'm going to just hand out your homework assignment, and we're going to do one of the examples from your homework together, and that should be enough to get you going. Does that sound good? Okay. You do have 10 minutes left, but you'll be fine.